Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quentin here and welcome to tutorial number 13. And in this tutorial, we are moving on from setting up our website template and we're actually gonna start coding or um, building our website header. So uh, I've gone ahead and ticked that task off and uh, let's take a look at what we've got set up so far. So we've just got this like primary button set up and uh, what I'd like to do is actually remove that. So uh, let's jump over to our text editor and let's remove that link. Um, so let's save this now. And uh, just to make everything look a little bit tidy, what I'm gonna do is close my header. The code is still there, it's just minimized so that it looks a little bit more tidy for my video. Uh, and what I'd like to do now is also just create a comment here and let's say, uh, start the header. And then I'm also going to leave a comment slightly further down the page to say end of the header, right? And now we can start building the header for our website. Now, fortunately, because we're using UI kit, a lot of this is already going to be set up for us. So all I need to do is go over to UI kits uh, documentation and under nav bar, I can get some of the code for our nav bar over here. So uh, pretty much all of the code has been set up for us uh, in this section, but I think if we scroll a little bit further down, we might be able to find one with a brand. So basically with our logo and then some links and then the buttons. Um, <clears throat> so see if we can find one that looks exactly like that. Not really. Well, I mean, this is more or less what we're looking for here. So I think what I'm gonna do is uh, grab all of that code. And the reason why I'm grabbing this one is because we can have our brand, we can have some links, and then we can also have this little, uh, you can see there, the last line of this is a toggle button. So that's gonna be this little toggle button that's in the nav over there. All right, so I'm gonna copy all of that and let's paste that in for our heading. And then I'm just gonna indent that to look uh, like it should look. Uh, and yeah, we've pretty much got everything set up. So in our brand section, we're gonna have to put in our logo. Uh, in our list uh, over here, we're gonna have to put in our, hmm. Okay, yeah, so this makes a lot of sense. So uh, in our list over here, we're gonna have to put in our links. Uh, then we've also got some navbar content, which I don't think we're gonna be working with, so I can just remove that one. Uh, and then we've got UK navbar content center, which is something that I don't think I'm gonna be using uh, right now. So let's just comment this out, but it is going to be useful for mobile later. So let's just, um, let's just keep that there. And the reason why it's gonna be useful for later is if I take a look at my design and I go over to the mobile side of things, I have a centered uh, logo here, right? So basically I want my logo to be in the center later on and I think when I do that or when I set that up, uh, I'm gonna put that logo here. Uh, but for now, my desktop side of things, I wanna put my logo here now you can see that I've got my navgar, uh, my my navgar. Come on, Quinton, uh, navbar uh, list set up here, but I haven't actually got any list items set up inside of this navbar. So let's go ahead and get some list items set up here. And what I want to do for that is go back over to this navbar page, scroll up, and uh, essentially just copy everything that's in here, but only in the unordered list. I don't want the nav item outside of that. And I can go ahead and paste those in here. So that's kind of gonna set up my nav bar for me, right? Uh, and what I'd like to do is maybe just add in some links. So if I go over to my homepage, uh, you can see that I've got, uh, or my design, sorry, I've got my home link, my about page, my services and my contact link. So let's, uh, let's just add all of those in here. So home, about, services, and I need one more. So let's copy this list item down and turn that into uh, a contact link. Now, services might have some children in future, but I think for now, and especially in my design, I haven't really accommodated that as a uh, 
setting or I haven't really accommodated that in my design. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this parent class, but we can always add it back in later. So let's save this. And if I jump back over to my browser uh, and I take, take a look at our website now and I hit refresh, you can see, uh, there we go. I kind of have a website almost set up. So we've got this little toggle button there. That's, that's also gonna be useful for mobile later. So we probably don't need to be looking at that right now. And we also need to add in our logo. So I think what I'm gonna do here is uh, jump over to Finder and I'm gonna go back to the root directory of my website. So there's my index file. And what I'd like to do is create a new folder here and we'll call that images. And in the images folder, I'm gonna put in a logo. Uh, so I kind of already have that prepared somewhere. I think it's in my tutorials uh, under resources. There's logo.ai. Do you think I have it as an SVG? Hmm. Oh, you know why it's an AI? Because I think if I open this up in Adobe Illustrator, and I guess I'm just gonna skip all of this stuff. Um, what I'd like to do here is use this as an SVG. So if I go File, and then I say uh, Save As, it doesn't really matter where I save it. I'm not actually gonna be using this, so let's just click Save. I can, I can replace it, whatever. Um, what I'd like to do here, uh, oopsie. <laughs> Let's go file again, uh, save as. Uh, what I'd like to do is not save this as an AI file, but as an SVG file. So let's hit save. Uh, and now with all of these settings exactly as they are, so make sure if your settings are not the same as mine, that you make them exactly the same as mine. Click the SVG code button, and that's going to give you code that you can use as an SVG for the logo, right? Uh, and if I come back over to my browser, I can then paste all of that in here in this link. Uh, and right now that's quite a lot of code. So let me just indent this and make that look a little bit better. I think if we just get that spacing right. Um, and then also get that spacing right. What I don't need is this style tag, so I'm gonna remove all that. I'm also gonna remove everything to do with linear gradient because I'm not using any gradient on that. Um, but we do want all the polygons and so on and so forth. So let's, that's interesting. Okay, I think, um, I think I might, for my, for my logo here, just need to go object, expand, expand, and then again, object, expand. Okay, uh, now the reason why I'm doing that is, you can see there is an L, and then for some reason there's a whole bunch of space and there's an ink, so I don't think that this is gonna work out very well for me. So I'm not gonna invest my time into that. I think I'm just going to get the code again. So let's go file, uh, save as, uh, try to turn this into an SVG, save again, um, and then get my SVG code. Copy that again and paste that into here. Now again, I don't need anything to do with a linear gradient, so I'm gonna remove all of that. I don't need anything in the style tag, so I'm gonna get rid of all of that and just tidy up my code a little bit. Also don't need the style tag. Right, so now I kind of have my logo in SVG form in my header, but that kind of takes up a lot of space, so I'm just gonna close that. And if I save this now and jump back over to my browser and refresh, uh, you can see that this logo is absolutely massive right now. So uh, what we need to do is uh, just fix that up somewhat. So um, if I come back here and just change the height to 
80 pixels at max, I think actually 60 and then I don't know what we're gonna have to do for the height, maybe about uh, 100. Um, that should kind of fix fix it a little bit. So there we go. Now I have my logo kind of set up. It is a little bit difficult to see where my nav bar ends right now. So uh, what we can do just as a placeholder is underneath my nav, create a block. So I'm gonna just create a div here and we can give this a class of UK dash block and then UK dash block dash secondary uh, and then just put some text in here doesn't really matter what it is um, but that's just going to allow us to tell the difference between our nav bar which is up here and where that nav bar ends and where the other content starts because our nav bar is white so it's kind of difficult to tell the difference between our nav bar and just a blank space right now right so our nav bar is kind of kind of set up um, we still have this little thing that we need to get rid of. And what I'd like to do is if I look at my design, you can see that everything is supposed to be centered, right? So my nav bar should be centered in the same container that everything else has been centered in. So uh, to do that, I'm gonna jump back over to my text editor. And I guess now we can hide my logo that's here. And what I'd like to do is take all of the content that is currently inside of my header and we'll just indent that one and then create another div here. Take that ending div tag and paste that just above the ending nav tag. And I wanna give this div a class, all right? And the class that I wanna give it is uk-container and then I wanna give it a secondary class which is uk dash container dash center. Okay, so without this center class, um, basically you land up having a container that isn't centered. I don't know why UIKit actually did it this way. I guess it's just nice if you're trying to have a container but you don't really want it centered. Um, but yeah, if you do want a centered container, then it's uh, you have to add two classes, right? Now we can go back over to the browser and uh, my navigation has been centered, but we've still got this kind of, um, this thing that I think we're not really gonna be using right now, but we are gonna use it when we start setting up our mobile header. So uh, I think what we can do here is just take that comment and pull it down because all of this stuff is going to be nice for our mobile header, but not so nice for our desktop header. So if we save this, um, up. Uh, desktop header has been pretty much set up correctly. Okay, so looking at my header now, I can see that uh, compared to our design, it is pretty similar. Uh, although if I go ahead and hide my guides here, I am missing the content along the uh, basically right-hand side or right top corner of my nav. So uh, in order to add that in, let's go over to Google Chrome and let's take a look at the navbar component again. Uh, and here you can see we've got flipped navigation at the end of our uh, navbar. So in order to add that in, we're gonna have to just uh, copy this whole div section that's here. Uh, and uh, basically it's got this uh, class UK navbar flip and UK navbar nav. Uh, so we wanna take all of that stuff and we just wanna paste that in uh, after this nav bar. So let's paste that in here, uh, get the settings all correct. And um, now we wanna add in three links. So we've got one, two, three. Uh, and I want to add in icons for each one of these. Uh, so let's just, wait, let's just end off the icon and <laughs> add in an icon. And we need to give that a class of UK dash icon. Um, and I think if we take a look at my design, I use the Twitter icon, the Facebook icon, and the YouTube play icon. Um, so to get all of those, uh, we can look under UI kits documentation. So I think uh, there is an icon, oops, icon section here somewhere. 
might be in the menu. Uh, common icon, right? Um, and now to get the, basically UIKit has a font awesome built in. So to get the Facebook icon, all we need to do is uh, type in UK icon dash Facebook for the Facebook icon, UK icon dash Twitter for the Twitter icon and so forth. So let's go UK icon dash dash Twitter. And let's copy that entire icon, make sure that I don't have any unnecessary smaller than and greater than signs and paste all of these in here. So UK icon Twitter, UK icon Facebook and UK icon uh, YouTube dash play. And that is gonna give me uh, the content to the right hand side of my nav. Uh, so all of those have been set up correctly as well. Uh, and now if I have to compare my desktop design in Photoshop to my design in Google Chrome, I think we're pretty much set up here. So I'm gonna end the video off here. But if you guys like the videos I create and you wanna help me make more videos, if you think this is a valuable service and you think you're learning a lot from this, uh, these videos, then consider becoming a patron because becoming a patron is the best way to help me fund my videos and help me make more videos for you guys. Uh, and so I wanna send a huge shout out to my current patrons who uh, contribute $5 or more because these guys really do help me make more videos for you. And uh, if you cannot help with money, then just don't forget to subscribe. Please feel free to leave a comment, like, and share my videos because that's gonna help my channel grow. And I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.